In the fall of 2017, when the leaves began to rustle and the air grew chilly, a fearless YouTube investigator named Alex decided to explore the infamous Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. Armed with a camera and a thirst for the supernatural, he set out on a mission to capture the elusive creatures rumored to inhabit the ranch's eerie landscape. As Alex arrived at the ranch, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. The sky was overcast, and the desolate, barren land seemed to stretch endlessly in all directions. He started documenting his journey, sharing his excitement with his growing online audience. The day was uneventful at first. Alex explored the abandoned buildings and the desolate fields, capturing strange noises and eerie shadows. He couldn't help but feel a growing sense of unease as the sun dipped below the horizon. It was as darkness descended upon Skinwalker Ranch that things took a sinister turn. Alex had set up his camera near an old barn, hoping to catch something unusual on film. Suddenly, he heard a guttural growl that sent shivers down his spine. He turned the camera towards the source of the sound. Emerging from the shadows was a tall, grotesque figure that seemed to defy the laws of nature. Its form was twisted, and its eyes glowed with a malevolent light. It was a skinwalker, a creature known for its ability to shapeshift and take on the appearance of animals or humans. Panicking, Alex stumbled back, dropping his camera. He fumbled for his flashlight, only to realize that it had gone dead. With adrenaline coursing through his veins, he sprinted towards his car, parked a short distance away. But the skinwalker was relentless. As Alex reached his car, he was horrified to find that all four of his tires had been slashed. He knew he couldn't stay in the vehicle. He was trapped, vulnerable, and alone in the darkness. With the skinwalker closing in, Alex made a desperate decision. He grabbed his camera, hit record, and began to run. The creature pursued him relentlessly, its growls growing louder and more menacing with each step. Alex zigzagged through the treacherous terrain, doing his best to evade the skinwalker. He knew that if it caught him, he might never be seen again. He whispered frantic pleas for help into his camera, hoping that someone, somewhere, might come to his rescue. As the night wore on, Alex's energy waned, but the skinwalker seemed tireless. It taunted him with eerie whispers and unsettling cries. He could feel its presence closing in, just beyond the reach of his flashlight's beam. Hours turned into what felt like an eternity, and just when Alex was on the brink of exhaustion, he stumbled upon a group of rocks. It was a stroke of luck he needed. Climbing up onto the rocks, he managed to find a small crevice to hide in. The skinwalker circled the rocks, its grotesque silhouette visible against the moonlight. It seemed frustrated, unable to locate its prey. Alex held his breath, praying that the creature would give up and leave him alone. As the night slowly gave way to dawn, the skinwalker finally retreated, disappearing into the darkness from whence it came. Exhausted and terrified, Alex waited for what felt like an eternity before emerging from his hiding spot. Shaken and battered, he retrieved his camera and recorded a harrowing account of his nightmarish encounter with the skinwalker. It was a tale that would chill the spines of all who watched, a story of a relentless pursuit in the heart of Skinwalker Ranch. Alex's video went viral, and his ordeal served as a chilling reminder that some mysteries are better left unsolved. and where the darkness held secrets that mere mortals could scarcely comprehend. In the dimly lit corridors of the Gibson County Jail, a sense of impending doom hung heavy in the air. It was the year 1892, and the southern town of Trenton, nestled in the heart of West Tennessee, was abuzz with whispers of the impending escape of five notorious convicts. The men, each with a trail of blood and wickedness in their wake, had formed an unholy alliance within the prison walls their desire for freedom binding them tighter than any chains ever could. As the clock struck midnight on a moonless night, a chilling breeze swept through the jailhouse, carrying with it an eerie omen. The jailer, an old and superstitious man, 
felt a shiver crawl down his spine as he locked the heavy iron doors. Unbeknownst to him, his actions had set into motion a night of terror that would forever stain the history of Gibson County. With a cunning born of desperation, the convicts had managed to pry open a small window in the dank cell they shared. One by one, they squeezed through the narrow gap, their hearts pounding in their chests as they tasted the sweet scent of freedom. The moon, obscured by thick clouds, cast a pale glow upon the deserted streets of Trenton, providing just enough light for the escapees to slip into the shadows. Their feet pounded against the cobblestone roads as they fled, their ragged breaths mingling with the symphony of crickets that filled the night. The convicts knew they had little time. They had to put as much distance as possible between themselves and the jail. And so they ran, each step a desperate bid to outrun the darkness that pursued them. But in the heart of the West Tennessee countryside, a far greater darkness awaited them. As they ventured deeper into the remote wilderness, the forest seemed to close in around them, its towering trees casting elongated shadows that seemed to twist and writhe in the night. An otherworldly silence fell over the land, broken only by the distant hoot of an owl or the rustling of leaves in the wind. Unbeknownst to the convicts, a curse older than time itself had taken root in these woods. A werewolf, a creature of myth and nightmare, prowled the shadows, its hunger as insatiable as the void within its soul. Its eyes glowed like burning wood, and its claws glistened like polished steel, a shining carbon to its doom for anyone unfortunate enough to cross its path. One by one, the convicts began to sense that they were not alone. Paranoia clawed at their minds, and the forest seemed to whisper with an otherworldly malice. Their hearts raced, and their eyes darted around, searching for the source of their unease. But before they could comprehend the true horror that stalked them, it was upon them. The first to fall was Joseph. Black-eyed, Malone, a cold-hearted murderer whose crimes had earned him a reputation as a devil incarnate. His screams echoed through the woods the sound piercing the stillness of the night before being abruptly silent. His companions could only watch in terror as his life was snuffed out, his body torn apart as easily as paper in the jaws of the beast. One by one, the convicts met their gruesome end, their cries of agony swallowed by the darkness. The werewolf, a manifestation of primeval fury, tore through them with a relentless savagery that defied all reason. Blood stained the forest floor and the night air carried the sickening stench of death. By the time the moon emerged from behind the clouds, casting an ethereal glow upon the macabre scene, the once fearsome convicts had been reduced to mere tatters of flesh and bone. The werewolf, its monstrous appetite sated, disappeared into the depths of the forest, leaving behind a trail of terror and destruction. The town of Trenton would never forget that fateful night, the legend of the escaped convicts, and the ravenous werewolf passing down through generations. Whispers of the curse that plagued the West Tennessee countryside would haunt the minds of those brave enough to venture into its depths. A chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edge of civilization. In the year 2022, in a quiet suburban neighborhood, lived a man named Alex. He was an ordinary individual with an ordinary life until he began experiencing something extraordinary in encounter with shadow people that would turn his nights into a living nightmare. It started innocently enough. One evening, as Alex was getting ready for bed, he caught a glimpse of movement out of the corner of his eye. Turning his head, he saw a shadowy figure dart across his bedroom doorway. He brushed it off as a trick of the light, but a sense of unease lingered. Night after night, the encounters became more frequent and distinct. Alex would wake in the dark of night to find these shadowy forms at the edge of his vision, watching him from the darkness. Their presence seemed to grow stronger, more tangible, as if they were testing the boundaries between the physical and the ethereal. At first, Alex convinced himself that his mind was playing tricks on him. Sleep deprivation, stress that could all contribute to these bizarre hallucinations. But as the weeks went by, he couldn't ignore the sinking feeling that something was deeply wrong. The shadow people were unlike anything Alex had ever encountered. They had a palpable malevolence, 
an ear that sent shivers down his spine. Their forms were humanoid, yet twisted and elongated, as if they were contorted in eternal agony. Their eyes, or what seemed like eyes, glowed with an unsettling intensity. As the encounters escalated, so did the fear. Alec's sleep became fragmented and fitful, plagued by night terrors that left him drenched in sweat and gasping for air. He would wake up to find the shadow figures standing around his bed, their distorted silhouettes looming over him. Every time he tried to escape, he found himself paralyzed, unable to move or even scream. One night, the terror reached its zenith. Alex awoke to find himself surrounded by the shadow people, their forms pressing in on him from all sides. He struggled to move, to free himself from their suffocating grasp, but it was as if he was ensnared in an invisible web. Their whispers unintelligible, but dripping with malice reverberated through his mind. Desperation took hold of Alex as he fought against the unseen restraints. With a surge of willpower, he managed to wrench himself free, stumbling out of his bed and fleeing his room. But no matter where he went, the shadow figures pursued him, their forms warping the very fabric of reality. Through the darkened house Alex fled, his heart pounding, his breath ragged. He could feel their presence at his heels an oppressive weight that threatened to drag him back into their clutches. The hallway stretched on endlessly, the walls closing in as if to trap him. In a last desperate bid for escape, Alex burst through the front door and into the night. He ran through the empty streets, his footsteps echoing in the silence, his mind consumed by terror. But the shadow figures were relentless, trailing behind him like a haunting specter. Exhausted and broken, Alex collapsed onto the pavement, his breaths coming in ragged gasps. The shadow people loomed over him, their forms flickering and merging with the darkness. He could feel them enveloping him, their presence seeping into his very being. And then, just as suddenly as they had appeared, the shadow figures vanished. The street was empty, the night air calm. Alex was left alone, shaken to his core haunted by the inexplicable and the terrifying. In the days that followed, Alex's life was forever changed. He became a shell of his former self, haunted by the memories of those shadowy encounters. No matter where he went, he felt their lingering presence, a constant reminder of the horror he had experienced. The shadow people had taken something from Alex's sense of safety, his peace of mind. And though he could never fully escape their grasp, he clung to the hope that he could find a way to banish them from his life once and for all. But the memory of their malevolent presence would forever linger in the darkest corners of his mind. In the autumn of 1682, an eerie stillness hung over the quaint English countryside. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting long, sinister shadows that stretched across the rolling hills and dense forests. The villagers of Willowbrook, a remote hamlet nestled amidst this tranquil landscape, had no idea that their peaceful existence was about to descend into a nightmare. The tale began with the arrival of a mysterious stranger, a man of imposing stature and strange, unsettling eyes. He introduced himself as Jonathan Blackwood, a weary traveler seeking refuge for the night. The kindly innkeeper, Mr. Wainwright, welcomed him, oblivious to the sinister secret that lay hidden beneath Blackwood's polite facade. As the clock struck midnight, a bone-chilling howl echoed through the countryside. It was unlike any sound the villagers had ever heard. The horses in the stable whinnied in fear, and the roosters fell silent. Unbeknownst to them, this mournful cry marked the beginning of a terror that would grip Willowbrook. The following night, a blood-curdling scream pierced the silence waking the townsfolk from their slumber. Rushing to the source of the sound, they found Mary Thornton, a young maiden who had gone missing days earlier. She lay dead in a pool of her own blood, her body mangled beyond recognition. Whispers of a monstrous beast began to circulate, spreading like wildfire through the village. local constable, 
a grizzled man named Reginald Hawkins, organized a hunting party to track down the savage beast responsible for the gruesome murder. Armed with torches, muskets, and a sense of dread, they combed the surrounding woods, guided only by the dim moonlight. Hours passed, and tension mounted as the search yielded nothing but the rustling of leaves and the eerie hoots of owls. Just as they were about to give up hope, a guttural growl emerged from the underbrush, followed by the monstrous figure of Jonathan Blackwood. His eyes glowed with an unnatural, malevolent light as he transformed into a hulking, fur-covered creature. A werewolf, a creature of folklore and nightmare. Panic erupted among the hunters as they opened fire, but the bullets seemed to pass through Blackwood's beastly form as if he were made of smoke. One by one, the hunters fell, their screams echoing through the woods until only Constable Hawkins remained. With a chilling grin, Blackwood lunged at him, tearing him to shreds. The moonlight reflected off the crimson blood that stained the forest floor. The following morning, the villagers awoke to a scene of unimaginable horror. The inn was a shattered wreck, and the forest bore witness to the gruesome slaughter. Willowbrook would never be the same forever haunted by the memory of the werewolf that had prowled their once peaceful countryside. Jonathan Blackwood, or the creature that had once been him, was never seen again. Some say he still roams the forests of England, a terrifying reminder that the horrors of the night can take on many forms, lurking just beyond the edge of the moonlight. And so, the legend of the Willowbrook werewolf lived on, a chilling tale of terror that would be whispered for generations to come. In the heart of Europe, during the chilling days of the 16th century, nestled deep within the dense forests and hidden valleys, there lived a legend so terrifying that it sent shivers down the spines of every villager. This was the tale of the nine-foot-tall werewolf, a creature born of darkness and despair. The year was 1567, and the village of Wolfhaven lay under the shadow of a dense and ancient forest. The villagers had long since abandoned their superstitions and fears of mythical beasts, but that was about to change. The first sign that something was amiss came one fateful night when the moon hung low, casting an eerie glow upon the village. The howling wind seemed to mimic the mournful cries of a banshee as it whispered through the trees. In the distance, a blood-curdling scream pierced the silence, and the villagers awoke in terror. They rushed to their windows and peered out into the moonlit night, their faces as pale as the freshly fallen snow. A figure emerged from the forest, towering over the tallest trees. It moved with an uncanny grace, its limbs elongated and covered in matted fur, a grotesque parody of a man. The creature's eyes glowed like twin orbs of hellfire, and its elongated snout housed rows of razor-sharp teeth that glistened ominously. The werewolf approached the village, its enormous paws leaving deep imprints in the frozen earth. Panic erupted among the villagers, and they scrambled to barricade their doors and windows, but they knew their feeble defenses were no match for this monstrous being. With a deafening roar that shook the very foundations of Wolfhaven, the werewolf began its merciless rampage. Houses were torn asunder, and livestock were devoured whole. The creature's claws left a trail of destruction in its wake, and its malevolent eyes gleamed with sadistic pleasure. As the night wore on, the villagers cowered in their homes, praying for salvation. Some whispered tales of a prophecy that spoke of a lone hero who would rise to defeat the beast. Others clung to crosses and prayed for divine intervention. But in the face of such abominable terror, their faith wavered. Days turned into weeks and the werewolf's reign of terror continued unabated. It seemed invincible, impervious to any harm that the villagers could inflict upon it. Desperation gripped the hearts of the people as hope dwindled like a flickering candle in the wind. The villagers watched in fear and curiosity as he approached the beast's lair deep within the forest. The stranger and the werewolf faced off under the light of the full moon, the ancient trees bearing witness to the epic confrontation. The battle raged on for hours, a clash of titans, until finally, 
With a deafening roar that echoed through the forest, the werewolf was vanquished. The stranger emerged victorious, but his identity remained a mystery to the villagers. With the creature's defeat, peace returned to Wolfhaven, but the memory of the nine-foot-tall werewolf would haunt their dreams for generations to come. To this day, the legend of the towering beast serves as a chilling reminder that in the darkest corners of the world, the line between myth and reality is often blurred, and that sometimes. The most terrifying monsters are the ones that walk among us.